Good morning. Thanks for joining me in this cold day in Iowa. Welcome, welcome. Leave me a comment. I'm going to go turn my comments on. Good morning. Uh, here, it's cold here. So, but thank you for joining me. And uh, I hope you're having a great week. I feel like it has been forever since I've been on a live. I, I think it was the Thursday before Christmas, if my memory serves me right. So uh, it's been a while, it's been a minute. I've been busy and uh, with Christmas and the holidays, things have been um, just not me scheduled. Oh, Debbie, you're first again. Uh, good morning, thank you. I always have that moment of fear and I'm like, is it all on right? Uh, we had a great Christmas, I hope you did too. It feels weird to even say that, but I haven't seen you since then. Good morning, Kalamazoo, I just love seeing that. It's type such a fun name. Good morning from Icy Oregon. Ooh, I bet you guys are. Uh, but yes, Oregon. I still, Rachel, I, it was so beautiful. We were there in the fall. I had never been to that part of the country. It's beautiful. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Good morning, cold Colorado. Yes. Good morning. I'm sorry. Some of these comments, I can't see your name, so forgive me. Um, yes, good morning. I From Illinois, Debbie, I bet you're as cold as we are. Uh, and yes, Whitney was in here. She went running away down the hallway. Uh, good morning, Lucy. Thanks for joining us. But yes, I was here before Christmas, so it just feels like it's been forever. Uh, I've had Christmas and New Year's. We took a trip to Florida. It's been, I feel like it's been forever. So let's hope I know what I'm doing today. Uh, I hope you guys had a great New Year's too and things are off to a good start. I know Taylor on Tuesday explained to you it's been, I'm sure people up north are like, yeah, 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 uh, you, we've got it worse. But for us, like, it, winter was all calm, and then it came in with some fury. And so we're all trying to, uh, I guess, get in a groove of snow, snow pants, you know, snow boots and the winter coat and the gloves and remembering all the things in the morning. So it's just cold. Um, but yeah, we're supposed to get more snow here today again. And, uh, and then next week, warm up and melt it all and we'll just have a bunch of mud. At least I will because I live on a gravel road. But uh, yeah, welcome, welcome to winter, right? It came in with a bang. Good morning. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just making cards quickly. Uh, I am queen of waiting till the last minute on getting my holiday cards out. You, I know people comment and say that they're already making their Christmas cards for this year, for 2024. I know, I wish I was like that. I do have um, some of my Valentine's cards done only because I started them on vacation. I decided to take just a few little stamp supplies with me, which I have not done that in years. Uh, just because we've, I feel like stamping's gotten a lot more. So we have a lot more tools, a lot more things to do. So I really kind of thought, being as we were on vacation for 10 days and had a house, and we were staying put, unlike our trip that we took in Oregon where we were moving to a new spot every single day, uh, I thought I might have some time in the morning like because I kind of get up early and my kids a little bit later. So I thought I might have some time in the morning to do something. So I did do some Valentine's cards. And we're making even more today, so that's exciting. Oh, oh I love that. Oh, Dawn, seriously, I wish... She said she's done with her 2024 Christmas cards. I wish. My niece's birthday is today, and I realized I made her card while I was on vacation, but I haven't mailed it yet. So I lost again, even though I thought I was being on top of it. So I'm, I really should, I really need to try to be better. I make all these cards, and then I send them all late. So I always love all the funny, belated birthday card sentiments and stuff. So welcome, everyone. And Yay to you if you are ahead of time. So I was going to show you four cards today, how you can put them together quickly and uh, kind of make them all the same and streamline your process. So we will talk about that today. Uh, there is the last chance that they opened up a few more spots for Stamp Joy Virtual. Uh, and they are, Stamp Joy, yes, virtual. They are very slim, again. Um, I know they're down to the last handful, I'll say. Um, so if you are at all on the fence, this is it. So uh, if you're thinking about it, next week, I don't have any tea to spill today because it's a sale, but I 
promise you, you should show up to check it out on Tuesday. Um, and you will also see me Tuesday, you'll see Taylor, and then Thursday, you'll see me again. Uh, you've had a couple of weeks of Heather because I've been gone, and now you'll have a couple of weeks of me making up for being gone. So thanks for joining us. Uh, my one question as I'm going to go flip us down is I'm curious if anyone has traveled with their stamp supplies before, and you can't take it all, so is there a genre or a thing that you focused on and how you did it? So uh, I kind of want to kind of chat with that as we're making our quick four cards today from hopefully from beginning to end. Um, I might add embellishments later just because I like to take my time and I fussy with those quite a bit. But yeah, welcome everyone. Let's get going and I'll show you what we're working on. There we go. So these are, I say more my style of card. Obviously, I'm sure I feel like you've probably seen me make this kind of card before. Uh, it's just my style, it's what I like to do, and then I am very clean and simple, I feel like, but there are a lot of smaller details in here that I hope to kind of cover with you. Um, yes, we're gonna talk about, Debbie says, yay, plants. I loved this kit when it came out. Um, I'll show you the original one. Let me bring the packaging in, because the one that Taylor and I use is all pulled apart. This was the original, and it was in a kit, and it was called Let It Grow. And we thought we were going to bring it back. We thought how cute it would be to make that the detail on the pots be more for Valentine's. So we release a Valentine one that's let it grow Valentine. So it redoes the pots for you, but all the patterns have like hearts on them and they're so cute. And I think it could be used for all kinds of things. But uh, Anyway, when they came back out with this, I loved it. And one of the reasons why I thoroughly loved this kit when it came out was you get six finished pots that are all cut out. These are the dies to the Love Grows, Love Grows Here, the original, or Let It Grow. I apologize. I keep saying it wrong. Let It Grow, the original. Uh, that Those dies cut out all six of your pots and the flowers to go in it. So I just think it's so cool that it's all together. And I feel like it is up to my mass production game because as you guys know, one of my favorite things to give is to give uh, like note card sets. I have an old neighbor that I still bring her some when I see her, even if it's just because, because she always just gushes and loves them. And the gal that helps me with my back issues, I bring her some every once in a while. And she's always insistent that I she pay me for them. I always say it's just her tip. Um, so I do a lot of card. I'm better at card giving, card set giving, than I am probably getting things to people on time. So I'm going to check comments here quick because I see a few. Um, she, uh, Rhonda said she traveled with card fronts, mini ink pads, some sentiments, few banners. She, you kind of got to keep it small, don't you? I agree. Uh, Pre-stamp to color in with your Olos. Anita, that's, uh, I've done that before. So when I said I don't travel with crafting supplies, I guess I kind of fibbed a little bit. Uh, I have traveled with like a few alcohol inks and like panels uh, back in the day when we did pre-printed panels. I have done that before. I guess I kind of forget about that. But this time, I did the mini ink cubes and blender brushes. So I kept it to three of our travel boxes, you know, that we sell the ones that fit our mini ink cubes in them. I did, and they fit 15, which is brilliant because that's where I get, like I was having a hard time picking my colors. So I was like, what's one more inch by like six by nine? So I put in uh, 15 times two, so 30 mini ink cubes and then just one of those same boxes with blender brushes in it. I picked mainly just four of the regular size brushes and then the other ones were the mini ones that are like, so I did four that were like this. And then I think I fit probably about eight of these in that same box. It probably wasn't the best and most perfect way to travel with them. Um, they were a little squished in there, but it got me colors. And then I just brought white cardstock or sugar cube cardstock and stencils so I had fun blending and having fun with that so I did send out a few thank you cards if anyone got a thank you note for me for the Christmas card um, 
I was working with limited supplies on vacation. So I just mainly worked with quads or any of our layering stencils. So I just had a lot of fun um, blending. I brought no stamps. I didn't bring a Misty. I, I did bring a trimmer. I have a smaller trimmer that doesn't even fit the full 11 inch length but I did that and I did a lot of blending. It was a lot of fun. So I got a lot done. I have a lot of cards to put together eventually. Um, I guess one other thing that I did do is I pre-cut like flowers out of sugar cube and uh, just ink blended them to give them color and things like that. And I have those in a pile too, to kind of assemble them into a card someday. Our, I think it's called garden variety die set. I just cut it all out of sugar cube so that I could have fun just making them into colors. So yeah, um, thank you. These are what we're gonna get back to what I was kind of talking about, my question about traveling with your supplies. Back to this, these are the cards we're going to create today. Um, I'm gonna walk you through almost all the way through how to make all four and how to do it efficiently. Uh, with the one caveat is the only slow thing is that you have to, if you do the foil is wait for it to dry or if you do any of the happy medium is waiting for it to dry. But I'm gonna walk you through that, set those aside. And these are some of my leftovers, which I do plan to make into more cards. So we're gonna start, I'm kinda of gonna give you the whole process of what I start with and what, how you can most efficiently wait for things to dry. So first thing we're gonna start with is those pots. So I know TE sells six by six uh, card stock for, in a pack for using with any of our six by six stencils. And that you can absolutely do that. I would just cut it down to three by six. So make one cut whichever way or cut three by six because you don't need the full six by six for this. But this is where the glass board is brilliant for doing this. Um, and the mini one works specifically for this too. So either way, whether you've got the big one or like myself who just has the smaller one still. Uh, I keep not getting it done. So I'm going to come back to the, and I'm going to start with the pots, just because the pots, I'm going to put that glitter grab or happy medium, whatever you want to use through it. And we need time for that to dry. So again, you can see that we slide this over. So you only need a three by six. In the past I've been, I just grab my six by six and I use it and I try to keep this side white and I'm like, why do I keep doing this? So uh, I just cut it down to the three by six. So let me grab some teal tape. So ready to go, tape this down. I did put a little bit of, because I was chatting, a little bit of temporary tape on the back. This TE, we do sell this on the website, the Easy Dots. Uh, I did put a little bit of that just to keep it on my glass board. I know I can use the magnets. I use my magnets, but I can't say I use them in the, proper intention for them, but I do use my magnets quite a bit. So let me see if anyone else said anything. Oh, that's hilarious. I think it's Kimberly. I apologize. I, the comments that come in sometimes are on red on black and my, my uh, aging eyes, I guess, are missing sometimes what it says. I think it's Kimberly said, and she does blender brushes, adhesive, jewel pick, teal tape. And you know what I forgot is I brought my little, I brought a tape runner and some liquid glue, but forgot my jewel picker. And you would not believe how that was hard for me. I wanted that so bad. I was like, what did I do? I left it at home. So uh, should have brought that with hindsight for next time. But uh, I'll just, just decided some of them, once I got frustrated of just trying to use my hands, I just decided I'll do that at home. <laughs> so all right, so for these pots, uh, I'll explain the coloring that I used on both of these. I have two different styles going on. This one in particular that I'm gonna use the glitter grab on, I started with pink champagne as my base, and I will, I'm gonna blend a little bit and then I'll come back. I do still need to mark my squares. This is one time I really mark my squares. I think it's very helpful. I love where they're positioned on the stencil so this is just pink champagne again this is the original base layer for the let it grow stencil and clear stamp combo so i just put down a little bit of pink champagne not much and i'm not even like 
being super particular about it other than making sure I get left, right, every direction. Then I'm gonna come to my guava. As you guys know, I love, love, love guava. If you want, you can tap off onto your glass mat. Um, I also use an open space on my stencil to tap off. And then I'm gonna take guava with one of our smaller blender brushes and just add more of an ombre down here on the bottom. Of all the pots and I if you notice you have the ombre pot and then the gold so it's really a pretty look I feel like so we're just gonna add the color down to the bottom of all three of these and I did do this ahead of time because for the live we need it to be dry so I can put it through the machine and I mean if you don't get into foiling because that's what I'm going to use the glitter grab is with the foiling and the mink. And if you don't have one or if that is something you don't do, the other thing that you can use is any of our happy medium. And I will, because I, I will walk you through what I did with this one. Because when I use the glitter grab and the foil, I technically don't have to use this side. Uh, I have to use it for the glitter, sorry. I have to use it for the glitter grab, but I do not have to use it for the, for blending. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna mark my squares, cause I'm gonna scooch that over. You could have done this first, whichever. I always make sure I use a pencil. Sometimes ink gets on top of your stencil and you can kind of grab it and blend it around. So I just use a pencil. But if you were, didn't wanna do the foiling, after you get your blending done, one of the things that I like to do is I, I feel like our glitter grab shows up better if you have a color underneath of it. So yeah, we do have the guava and the pink champagne underneath there, but it really shows up so much better if you put a coordinating color under in that same area that it's going. It'll make it so you can see it better. So if I scooch this over, and if I wanted to use the happy medium, which is what I used for this card, I took uh, guava and did a very heavy hand, very heavy hand, or you could use, uh, actually, I think I might've used fruit punch after I put down a heavy hand of guava, I thought it wasn't dark enough. I added a little bit of fruit punch on top of that and then went over all of it with the glitter grab. And that's how I got this one, the red, the red glitter. Sorry, happy medium, I said that wrong. The red happy medium is what went over top and that's how I got those pots. Um, all of these little, isn't that cute? I just love the pink on the, and the red together. So that is if you don't wanna foil. I, using the glitter grab on and mink foil is probably one of my very favorite things to do. So. Uh, I know I've showed you before and I'm going over it again because it is one of my favorite things to do and I think it has a lot of wow factor to it. So we'll line this up and beings, I wanna keep going with you guys. I do have a bucket of water at my feet here to put my stencil in because the glitter grab, when it dries, you can let it soak and get it off, but it's much easier if you just go ahead and put it in some water. So. Uh, again, scooch this over. If you wanted to use something like the Happy Medium, make sure you put a color down first. But for the Glitter Grab, it's not, you can't see through that, it's opaque, so we don't need to worry about color this time. Get my inks out of the way. So this is our TE Glitter Grab. It's meant to, its original purpose was that I could put it through my stencil and then throw, remove my stencil and put loose glitter on it. Uh, as you guys know, I am not a huge fan of loose glitter. It gets underneath my nose, sorry. Let's get the lid off. You do wanna keep this. I know we say it every time, but if you use glitter grab that, you wanna keep that. That's what keeps this all from drying out inside your, pot, uh, inside your container. <clears throat> if for some reason you happen to have thrown it out, Grab a piece of like press and seal and put it over the top. So I, these are spatulas that are sold. We sell them by Nuvo. 
I know we've had some issues with getting them in, but I haven't checked today to see what they have. But I've shown you this many times if you watch my lives. You probably already own them or want them on your wish list. So, and then with this small of an area, this probably using the stencil palette is probably not hugely important. But for me, it's, it's kind of a go-to. I feel like I get a very smooth finish. And with the foil, that's really noticeable. So um, someone, and I apologize again, you, uh, I can't read the name. Um, now I need the glitter grab. If you, you've been asking for loose glitter. Oh, you've been starting to use loose glitter on your cards. This is great because like you can, so this is the, the pal, and I see that I picked up a little bit of my red ink. That's why I try to be a little skimpy with my glitter grab or my product. Sometimes you do pull up some of your ink and then you don't wanna put that back in the jar. So I am going to be a little bit wasteful and get rid of that, but it will not contaminate my jar then. And I either take a baby wipe for the spatula because it's made of silicone and it just wipes right off. Same way with the score pal or the stencil pal. They just clean up and get put away. But the other thing is with if you use this and you want your stencil to come out looking perfectly, my biggest tip for you is that you hinge, you use the hinge method on the stencil. Um, so make sure you have a solid uh, piece of temporary tape at the top and you wanna peel the tape off the bottom portion. And this is true also if you're using some of the happy medium, make sure that you put that a hinge at the top. And the reason why I do that is because if you peel off both of these pieces of tape and you go to peel up your stencil, the stencil will kind of want to shift to the back, whatever's coming up last. It'll kind of want to shift back. And if you do that, you're going to smudge either your glitter grab or your happy medium. So I always make sure I hinge it at the top and then I pick up from the bottom where I've removed the tape and go straight up because then and I always try to, to make my hinge to be substantial. It's not just a little piece of tape. So it holds my stencil in place better as I'm peeling it up. So you don't have the kickback, I call it. I don't know what other word to call it, the kickback to smidge. Because usually if I get a smudge, it's at the top or wherever my stencil is going up last and peeling off of, that's where I hit it. So, and this has got to go in my bucket of water, which I will put that in there. That'll help keep it wet until I can get it clean. Now this we're gonna have to set aside to dry. Uh, this takes, and that's one of the reasons why I did it first, is that this takes probably, I would say a half hour to an hour, depending on how thick you put it down, what the climate is around you. But it'll go from this to, let me grab the one that I already did, to that. Can you see that? This is the one I did yesterday here at the office. And this is the one we just did. So when it's white like this, it's wet. And when it's clear, if I kind of tip it around in the light a little bit, this is dry. So this we'll have to set aside. But that's one of the reasons why I had you do it first. So if you're trying to do these at home, you can get uh, this starting to dry for you. So we'll put those things away. The next thing that I want to do, because I know we still need to do our actual fronds or actual plants, the other thing I want to do is this embossing folder in the background. So I love this new embossing folder. It's one of our 3D and I kind of wanted to walk you through the sandwich on that. I've seen a couple of questions online for that. So there's two new ones that came out, the sketched hearts and the lots of love. And I have, I have a sample of the sketched hearts too, but I have the lots of love for today. And uh, an embossing folder, if you want your imagery, for the TE embossing folders, if you want your imagery popped up and not recessed, which would be this side, you wanna stick your cardstock in so you can read the title and see the TE. So let me grab our machine. So we use here at TE, we use the Big Shot. So I'm gonna give you instructions on how to use the Big Shot. Every machine is very different when it comes to these 3D embossing folders, so you will have to look up your machine. But one of the main things for our machine that we need is the embossing pad kit. So you've seen me use the embossing pad kit to get uh, impressions out of stencils and other things like that. 
Uh, that is what it's meant for, and dies, you can get impressions out of dies, but it also works for these 3D embossing folders. So the kit comes with two, which you need for the original use, which is, you know, to get impressions with dies or stencils. When you use it for this, you only, I, my machine or our machine here in the studio and my machine at home, I only need one, the thicker one. So I have the thinner one, so there's the thick and the thin, and I only end up using the, the thicker one. I always say, you can always add, but if you have too much in and you hurt your machine, that's a bad idea. So with the big shot, you'll need the thicker of the embossing pad kit piece. You will need this main standard platform. It even says one of the, this one even has the 3D impression on it. And then you will, this part takes off the thin die adapter. We don't need that right now. So we have that, and then we need one of the cutting plates. Let me get the nice looking one. All right, and one of the cutting plates. That's what we need for our sandwich. So next thing is I'm gonna grab a white, or not white, cupcake piece of cardstock. I know I used uh, pink champagne, but I grabbed the cupcake because I did do two different tones on these. This one was the cup or the pink champagne. This one was with cupcake, this background. So I just went with cupcake for both of them. I thought it looked fine. So one thing that I like to do with the 3D embossing folders is I know some people spray them with water, uh, the back of your cardstock. I choose to just take a baby wipe, a clean baby wipe, and I wipe the back of my cardstock. Um, I'm not going to do the front of my cardstock because I'm going to be putting ink over the top of it and I just don't want that moisture on the front. So I just take a clean baby wipe and wipe the backside of my cardstock. So by backside, I mean the piece that, so this would be the top where I can see the lots of love and the TE and then the backside that I wiped is down here that's going to get pushed up. So close that up and then I, with these 3D, I always, or I shouldn't even say with 3D, with all of my embossing folders, I always put the hinge in first. That's the way I was taught. If possible, if it doesn't matter that you're trying to get a certain design out of it, I always put the hinge in first. So, and then make sure it's positioned over our embossing pad and then you, your last cutting plate. So you've got your main standard base, one of the embossing pad kit, your folder with the cardstock in it, and then one embossing or one cut, cutting plate over the top and run that through. If you feel like it feels hard or it's hard to get through, uh, make sure, just don't force it because I have popped a machine before, so just be careful. So any updates on Cupcake Cardstock? Oh, sh I picked one that's out of stock. I apologize, I do not know. I do not know, I can't answer that. I didn't realize that, I didn't catch that. So I apologize, everyone who's asking. I do not have an update for you on that. So pink champagne would work beautifully with this. Like I said, this one is pink champagne ink and it just so happened that as I was putting them together, I just chose to go with cupcake, but it would absolutely work. But anyway, I apologize. I didn't catch that ahead of time. So let me put my machine back together so it's ready for when we're ready to die cut again. Move this out of the way. So, and then I would do that obviously four times to do all of them. So part of my process when I am mass producing or trying to do several cards at a time is I will, I do all my cutting first. So uh, I'm gonna use the petite scallop stacklets. I cut four quarter sheets of cardstock down. You will, I like to use our top folding toffee card bases. Uh, cut your four pieces, which I have already. I just got them done. Your four pieces of pink cardstock, whichever one you're using, pink champagne, or if you have a cupcake in your stash. And then I also even, this is another piece of mine, I will have my cardstock cut to the size that I need or a piece ready to go and get them all done at once. So back to this, uh, I did these last night because it does take a little bit for that sugar cube to dry. So I did four of them yesterday, but I want to show you how I did that. So if you look closely, this is the one that I just did and this one, you can see there's a, it's very subtle, but it's there. 
um, it, I put sugar cube ink over the top of this. So, sorry, and let me double check. I'm checking on comments. Okay, I think I don't think I missed any ones. I know, I with the cardstock, I 100% tell you that I am uh, waiting on cardstock just as much as you are. So I apologize. Yeah, uh, we're sad that some of the vendors have that we're using don't have it anymore. And we did our best to buy out what we could, but hopefully there's always hope. I tell Taylor all the time, there's always hope that a vendor will come around and have the color that we need. So you never know, there's always hope. And uh, outside of using it like this, I will color die cuts if I don't like, um, passion fruit is one of my favorite colors and being as we don't have the cardstock for that, I just always die cut out a sugar cube and then ink blend or smush my ink pad on it to get the color I want. So lots of tips and tricks for that too on the side. But anyway, this is without the sugar cube and this is with, but I did these yesterday just so they would be dry and I wouldn't be getting white on my fingers. So I do like to use one of our ink pad stands, but as you guys know, that is something that I'm obsessed with. Uh, and I use it all the time. So, and then this is our lovely, very well loved Brayer that we have around here at TE. You can take the ink pad and run it right over the top of your cardstock. I just like the control that I get with this, and I feel like I hit that second level of the 3D embossing folder a little bit better with a Brayer. And if you're anyone like me that's been around crafting for a while, you either have this Brayer or a different Brayer. There's so many different. It doesn't have to be the one that I have here, just a brayer. Anyway, and then I'm gonna run it on a sugar cube ink pad. And I do like to use my glass board, or if you're using a piece of cardstock underneath, have it be one that you're gonna get rid of, because that sugar cube ink will sit up on the top and be wet for a while. And then I just run it back and forth until I see that little bit of a hue of the white. It's much more dramatic on other darker cardstocks. I'll show it to you on the toffee that I did yesterday also. But it's also, if you do hit one of the <clears throat> recess spots with the sugar cube and you're using a light cardstock, it's not as noticeable either. So anyway, just back and forth several times and there you go. That makes that. But again, we will set this one to dry. These are the ones I did yesterday to let them dry. Set that back by my pots that are drying. I'm gonna show you, this is a toffee one that I tried yesterday. I just didn't end up going with it. I think it's still just as beautiful. Isn't that fun too? So again, this is still with that lots of love. I think this is so pretty. It's trying to channel my inner Heather, but I didn't end up using it, but I still think it's really, really pretty. So that is sugar cube on the toffee with the brayer. I just think the Brayer gives me more control to not hit the lower spots. Uh, you can take your ink pad and rub it over the top. I just feel like the outcome is much more consistent when I use the Brayer. I mean, this works too, but again, I'm catching more of that. Do you see the third level? I'm catching that one more than I am overall. So that's why I prefer to use my Brayer, but either way it works. And then last but not least, this was the sketch tarts. I do have a little bit of the sugar cube on top of that already. But again, I just use the folder, just like I said, and then rub my, or run my brayer over the top with a sugar cube on it. That one's really pretty too. It's very dramatic, I feel like, with these, the lots of love hearts. And they're cute because they remind me of the conversation hearts that my daughters won all the time. So let's get this out of the way. This I do take either a baby wipe to wipe it off or I take it to my sink, run it under the sink. Uh, not as like crucial that this gets wiped off right away. The white or sugar cube ink's pretty forgiving to come off of there. The blue that you see underneath was paint. So that's why we did get that off. So set that one aside. And then I just use a baby wipe or I actually usually choose the baby white first to wipe up my white ink because otherwise it really puts a lot of ink on my microfiber cloth. But this is just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Wipe it up with just to get any last remnants of sugar cube off of my glass mat. 
get that out of the way. All right. So now that we have the things that need to dry, which are pots and the, um, the embossed cardstock, I let set both of those aside to dry. That's why I tried, did those first, was to get them out of the way. Next thing is that we're gonna do our plants because we need the cute plants, right? So I have another piece, the, the other half of that six by six cardstock cut down to three by six, and we'll do the actual plants. Grab them back in. Again, I'll need my pencil. Not my pencil, how about a pencil? <laughs> Let's see, do we have any other? I don't know, I must have missed something, I apologize. Do the 3D folders work in the old cuddle bug? I don't see, they might be too wide. If that opening is not six inches, uh, I can't remember, my sister has an old cuddle bug. So this is fully six inches wide. If that opening is not six inches wide, it will not work. So I apologize about that if that's what you like to use. But let me see. Oh yeah, that would be beautiful. Um, the black cardstock and cupcake braid over it. The only thing is that the cupcake cardstock is a um, different formulation. Our sugar cube is a white pigment ink, so it sits up on top of the paper. Whereas the dye ink in like the cupcake or what I have in my hand, pink champagne, soaks into the cardstock and then you won't see it and that black will come through. White on black would be very cool and very striking if that's a look you were trying to achieve. Um, but yeah, to get it to sit up on top of the paper of a dark cardstock, you would need something that's a pigment ink that sits up on top. So let's grab, again, my ink stand because I love it. And I'm gonna start with Spearmint. I laid uh, Cupcake or Pink Champagne, whichever, Guava, Spearmint, and Poblano, and then a piece of gold foiled cardstock together. And I just love the combination. So that's how I ended up with the overall look that these cards ended up with. It's gonna be, I know I've used it before. It is one of my go-to colors. So I'm gonna tap off, excuse me. This is, uh, doesn't give me as much area to tap off color on here. So I'm just, I am gonna use my glass board. Have one of my bigger original blender brushes and I'm just gonna put down a quick wash of spearmint. I know we have all become expert blenders these days. So left, right, counterclockwise, clockwise, just to make sure I'm hitting all the areas of my opening in my stencils. Um, this, for, or this, I think it's an aloe plant right here. This little pointy piece, be careful with that. I try to ink blend with it, and the same way when I'm cleaning, I try to go with that one just to keep that one where it's supposed to be. If I blend from the top down, it keeps that point of that plant imagery in place. And be careful with it when you're cleaning it. <clears throat> it's the only really pokey one there is. So then we will go ahead, because I do like to mark my squares, mark them with a pencil really quick. Move that over. Yes, absolutely. I miss that. I wonder if that happened while I was on vacation. Um, the Simon, she said the Simon Hurley paste. I have played with them. So much fun. So yes, absolutely. Are you talking about the little patterns on the pots? That would be such a great idea. I have to go back and look at that now. I was, pre I was pretty, like, didn't totally check out on vacation. I watched the lives and stuff like that, but yeah. So we'll move that over and match up the squares again. You can grab one of the little ones or I happen to grab one of the bigger brushes, one of the original ones here. Taylor and I have chosen to use our blue corn brush as our poblano. So whichever one you use, I'm gonna go over it. I don't want it to be super dark as poblano is a pretty heavy color. So I'm gonna use a little bit lighter hand for mine. Yeah, same way with those Simon Hurley paste, just the same way that I did. I'll put it down with spatula, scrape it with a, 
uh, stencil pal and yeah that stencil pal is I know I used it I don't know if I really spoke much about it I've shown it to you guys so many times I feel like I use the beveled edge as my downside when I'm scraping so it has a specific like if you look at it there's a flat side and then there's a beveled side I use the beveled side against my cardstock to scrape down for some reason if I use the flat side I find more grooves and harsh lines and stuff I don't know what it is about this beveled side I assume there's probably someone out there that told us originally how it was supposed to be used and I don't know but I just know what works best for me as I use this long side on the beveled side to pull it down so same way with the Simon Hurley paste I've played with them here in the office I just didn't know when they were going out for customers to purchase so that would be very cool very very cool all right peel this up I don't have to really worry about my hinge method but there's my cute plants that go in the pot set this aside to clean let's see here pull this up and being as I use some of that temporary I always try to get it off if you have an old piece of tape I, I use that to pick it up or you could just use your magnets that's their intended purpose right but the little dot runner that's how I get that up and out of my way get that closed off again I want my surface to be clean I am so thankful that we did uh, figured out the whole alcohol and microfiber cloth I did bring a spray bottle with me because I knew I was going to do a lot of ink blending and uh, use a different cloth while I was down there but on vacation but it cleans up your stencil so well such a nice thing um, oh thanks for the tip on regarding that beveled edge I have trust me I have used it enough it is an ask me how I know thing because for a while I was using the flat side and I would just I was always like where are these lines coming from so I did flipped it over and decided to keep trying so let's cut this out and being this is dry this one is dry because I did it yesterday I will cut this one too while I've got the dye machine in I just wanted to show you this is the one we did it I did at the beginning of the live you did it with me right we did at the beginning it started it still has a little bit of white and it's starting to get clear so how long have we been together Oh, a good 30 minutes it's been so it still needs probably another 30 so set that there I do this is a very much a personal preference for you I choose to die cut these then send them through my foil machine I use less foil it's less waste but it's completely 100% up to you um, because if I were to cut I would have to do a foil piece this big whereas uh, if I cut them I can just kind of stack them up next to each other and do it that way so let me get some tape all right tape this down I just love that I get all six of these cut at one time so again this is dry this is the one from yesterday and this one again I use the pink champagne to the guava plants too this is my kind of crafting I like I think that's why I like the quads so much too is because I get four panels done at one time and while we have the machine I'm going to go ahead and take this I believe it's called the open open circle scallop it comes with this piece and the inner piece I'm just going to use this part we will cut a couple of those because we need those also bring this back in try to get a few things done while we have the machine in so again I would cut this and I'm going to use the pots I can get four cards out of these pots because there's two small ones that I kind of put together um, but I can get four cards out of this one effort so we'll set that aside here are my fronds or plants that out then I would move on and cut out everything that I need of these and if you're real careful and use some tape and be good you can set up your scallop and 
your petite scallop rectangle on the same motion through your machine. So I do like to use a little bit of tape just to make the sure things don't shift on me. Tape that down. Tape that down, run this through. We will have two of our pieces done. Oh, but I'm sorry, I'm shaking everything. So I won't do that. <laughs> I won't continue to move on with those. But So that gives us another one of those. I did cut some of those ahead of time so you just didn't have to watch me die cut and die cut. Pop this out. This is where, I, I know Taylor brought it in. It's one of my favorite things. This is so brilliant with that, uh, I don't, it's got a brush end for cleaning out your dies. It works great. It's by Sizzix and we brought it in. I didn't bring it over with me. It's my favorite thing for getting all your little bits and bobbles out of your die when you're done. So I think that's everything. Things I cut some ahead of time. I think so. I think we're all done with the die cutting. I won't go far with it though. How about that? Oh, you're saying so. I think Barbara's saying use the Simon Hurley stuff over the embossed card stuff. That would be beautiful. I love that idea. That will be coming soon. <laughs> I have tried that. So, yes. I have done it with the Simon Hurley stuff over the embossed, but we won't say when, but it's coming soon. How about that? I love that stuff. It's fun. It's got a lot of fun colors too. I think we, if I think Taylor started with kind of the basics, but more to come, I'm sure. So we'll get the pieces of this all popped out. So we've got four of those. We've got all of our pots. I'm going to go ahead and turn my mink on because we need that. We've got our, our six pots. We have our six fronds or plants. Set those aside. I love these little pots, they're just so cute. I love the patterns on them. So you could have a whole lot of fun. I wanted to show you one of the thoughts that I had yesterday was how pretty red would be on these. I think that would be really cute, even with the colors that I chose, the pink champagne and guava or cupcake and guava, whichever you choose. I think our new red sparkle foil would be really cute. I happen to go with the gold, uh, it's just what I chose because I really, really loved in the last release, these bits and pieces of Valentine foil drops, I think are so pretty. Um, and that is where my color scheme started with the guava and pink champagne, because these definitely pant match more with pink champagne than the cupcake. Uh, I went with kind of the contrast on it, but they're just so pretty. So uh, that's why I picked the gold, because there's flecks of gold in there. So going to take and cut just a piece that's about an inch which is about what my pots need to be put this back in all right so we will grab our carrier sheet and our magic shim uh, the other thing about glitter grab and foil is I feel I just feel like it's really foolproof it just works every time. I love doing it. I feel like my results are just easy. So, and when I do the mink, I don't go up. Two or three max is all you need. Mine is basically warmed up. It just doesn't need quite the temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep scooching. I know I had these all in here last time, so I can do it again. So that's why I cut them out because I'm just using just one scheme one piece all the way across. So I will bring my machine in so we can see it go through. Run that through. I always also the fold of the carrier sheet, I always put the fold in first, same way with the embossing folder. I will, Barbara, I swear I'll try it. Just checking my notes, making sure I haven't missed anything. Yep, Debbie, I agree. 
the best use for the little scraps. Yesterday I used up all the scraps doing all my little pots of the gold. So now I didn't have any scraps for today. But that is another reason why I think it's so nice to just cut them out and then you can position them. This is going to use one that one by six piece really, really well. So I will set that. We're gonna move this back, turn it off. But again, I am not kidding you when I say this is just my favorite. I love it. I have gone, no lie, gone through a whole jar at home. Now here at TE, you would understand we make a lot of samples, but even at my desk at home, I've gone through a whole jar. I had to buy a new one. This is my favorite. So this is my joy too. I love to bring this down to other people in the office and let them peel because it's just so good. Watching this peel up, isn't that so pretty? I love the ombre with the gold. And there we go. And that was a really good use of that. I could have been a better cut, but a, a one by six of foil. Isn't that fun? Again, the red I think would be really pretty too, our new red that we came out with at, at Holiday. So I like to go ahead and I'm gonna glue all my pots in their, in all my plants into their pots. And I do like to lay them out because I have certain pots that I feel like, I know they're mix and matchable, but I have some that I feel like go in. Like this one I feel like goes in this one. And, to each their own. And I feel like this one goes in that one. So I always want to lay them out. So get these laid. These, not so much. I feel like these, I can move them around a little bit more. But that's where they're gonna go. And then I know I've told you guys, I always keep the backer sheets to anything sticky. And I know someone in the past said, well, what else do you use them for? So like, this is like the back of like a sticker sheet, a postage stamps, your Avery labels. I have them save these around the office for me because I this is the other thing I do with them. I love using my die cuts on them because if it squishes out or I have glue that came out on the bottom, it's on there and my die cut is not stuck to my work surface or paper or anything else. This will let it up and I don't have to worry about getting glue on anything. So I put down a little bit of glue I am very much still in love with my Verily Arts glue. It's what I took on vacation with me. And then this is where I use the magnets. That is not the intended use of magnets, but it works for me. And again, the only reason why I put this sheet behind is because if it squishes out, I'm still going to be able to get my die cut piece up. I don't have to worry about ruining my surface anywhere or getting glue on my desk or anything like that. I use the magnet to hold them down. Just keep going. If I get all six of them done, I'll be ready for my cards. Let me see, am I missing anyone? Oh. I'm trying to keep up on comments a little bit better today. So if I go silent, that's usually why, because I can't talk and read at the same time very well. Will TE consider adding more stencils that complement the Let It Go grow? I don't know. I agree, that would be super fun. Well, I know Taylor reads all the comments, so if you guys buy it and it goes over well, I'm sure they will keep making it. <laughs> I thought the Valentine hearts were so cute. So keep going here. I've got two more to go. I'm out of magnets though, but I'll just start moving other magnets over. And this little one, I these are the ones I kind of start to put a couple of them together. So you could make six cards, you could make two cards by deciding not to put so many on a card, but I put one on each card and then I repeated two on one of the cards. So get my, this is a definite, you gotta put the needle back in the Barely Arts glue for sure. But, so I ended up with four because I used a single one and then this one I doubled up just because I thought this pot was kind of small, so I wanted it to have something else with it to make it a little more substantial. We'll let those dry for a second. We can grab any of our card bases and glue the 
petite scallop sugar cube to our embossed panels. Uh, it does take a little bit for that sugar cube to dry. I would say yesterday after, depending on how much you put on, how, how well inked your ink pad was, I would say I let mine sit for about an hour at least. And then when I'm using these 3D, I do like to use liquid glue. I feel like it gives me more grab than my tape runner does, but again, to each their own, whatever you like. So we will get some Barely Arts glue on here, or Nuvo if you like to use the press. I just haven't gotten used to the press. Here at the office we have one, and it's Taylor's go-to, and I'm still bound and determined to use up my one bottle of Barely Arts glue. <laughs> I feel like I've had it forever here in the office. So we'll set that to dry. Again, you could put a heavy block or something on there. I grab my magnets and continue on with them as my anchor. And you will glue those all together. I think I might need one more. One more of these. I won't bore you with the whole entire process, but this is where I would continue on with each piece. So I would do all four of these so that they're all done and ready to go. Then I will grab my card bases. I will grab. Oh, kind of crooked. Get that going straight. Don't want it crooked, do we? That's the other nice part about liquid glue is you can get it peeled up if you need to. Oh, the other thing on vacation that I took with me that I cannot believe I have plowed through another one is my 1 32nd 1 by 3 uh, foam. I've gone through another roll. It's crazy how much I go through those. I love them. So then I would also pull out four of my card bases. I, whichever, if you make them yourself or if you purchase them pre-done for you. And then I would go ahead and score and fold all four of them to make my process. I just feel like if you've got the bone folder in your hand and you've got the card stock out, you might as well do all four of them so that they're all ready to go so you can keep this assembly line going. Just helps save time. So this will end up on here and it's up to you. You can glue them down flat, you can pop them up. But like I said, I go through these one by, these one by three so fast. I did one layer of them on the back. So I would do all of these next because you've got your supply out, you've got you found it, if it's like me. I found my one by three on my desk, and I like to just get a couple of them opened up. Oops, I must have given up on my Barely Arts glue. Get that put back together. I have told you guys this before, when I do my card bases, if I am adhering the panel to it, I always open mine. It just keeps me from gluing it together upside down. I do it too. Ask me how I know. All right, adhere that down and then I can reach in and grab the other two. <laughs> Debbie just ordered another roll too. I couldn't believe it. When I was on vacation, I was like, oh, I think my roll was like down to there maybe of my roll. And I came home with none. I, 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 it was kind of good timing. I was done. We were getting ready to head home, but uh, yeah, I was like, great. I get to add that to my cart, add to cart. <laughs> I go through a lot of them. And again, uh, when I'm going to go put things together, I will open up my card base just because it helps me to know that I'm fully adhering everything right side up. And I don't have this pop-up that you get from your card base if it is folded. So. Let's put this stuff aside for a second. I'm just gonna show you how I finish this. So again, these are drying, and even if a little glue squished out, which I can feel it on that one, it won't be stuck because it's the sticker paper. Put those aside. Um, something I wanted to ask you, if you guys noticed. So debate that was in the office yesterday between Taylor and I. Do you like the black sentiment or the gold? I like both. And I like both for different reasons. I feel like I like gold because it goes with the foil drops and it goes with the foil. But I also like the black because I feel like it stands out and you really see it. 
uh, with the gold it kind of more fades in so can you guys tell me I'm curious which one you like better black or gold so we'll, I'll keep going here with this but I'm kind of curious to know what you say so another thing that came out this release that I am in love with and I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for is the essential sentiments back when this came out with a kit with the critters in it I did not purchase it um, I can't remember for what reason why I can't own all the things even though I want to um, I didn't purchase it and I had great regret because I love the font work in this stamp set it's a clear uh, I just love it I was so excited when it came out and I'm excited to have the foils because you know I'm a big foil lover and I love the ease of that being done so and the sentiment so one of these with the red I put together with that sentiment so anyway I'm curious to know what you guys say if you like the gold or black oh it's so mixed gold black black Okay, well, I'm getting black, black, gold. Oh gosh. Black, I'm getting, I'm getting both. I kind of the same way, same way as same thought that I had. So anyway, but I'm gonna walk you through my thought process on that. So some of these cards that I have done up ahead of time, I'm gonna show you how I do my sentiment and mass, mass production also, is I will do a bunch of them. I did four here and I will die cut them out. And then I, because I don't need this many Valentine's Day cards, so I did some with the just a note from that essential sentiments. I adore that font work and I use it quite a bit. The thinking of you, I will use a lot. I don't have a ton of baby things, so I love that there's a welcome little one in there. Granted, this says thanks very much, which goes with the bears that this was released with, but I, I like the bear and I own the bear anyway. So, but I use this one a lot and I'm glad it's out and in our collection now. So. I will, I'm going to grab my scallops. I think I buried them. I need my scallops. And I'm going to walk you through how I did my sentiments. So if you're doing sentiments and they're all going to be the same, this is what I do. Like, so my just a note or let me double check to see if anyone gave me gold because you use the gold foiling. I agree, but I like the black because it sticks out. So I'm really on the fence about it myself. So whatever you're going to do, whichever one is the way that you want it, um, I'm gonna show you how I did them. But being as I have them done already, I'm just gonna grab back to that essential sentiments and stamp those up. Let me grab my Misty. And being the essential sentiment is clear, which I don't know where I hit it, right here. I need my foam in there. So then I also grab whatever card stock I've got and I want one that I can like repeat and keep going and repeat, repeat, repeat all the way down my card. So let me do a few of these thinking of you. I can see myself using that one quite a bit too. And I will position my card stock and my stamp on the top so I can keep pushing it up, okay? I might cut this down. I think it's gonna be bigger than I need and I want to not run out of space. I'm gonna cut this. And however many we get done is great. I would like four, but if I don't have enough room for four, that's fine. I'm gonna get my powder tool. Make sure I hit my cardstock really well. I'm gonna show you this on gold, but it also works with the VersaFine and the clear. You just wanna maybe move a little bit faster if you're using the VersaFine and the clear because the VersaFine does dry a little bit faster than VersaMark, but whatever you need, whatever you're working with. So let me grab my VersaMark. I've powder tooled that, set that in there. I don't really care because if I'm die cutting it, it's coming out of there anyway. Switch that up to the top, pick it up. Make sure you're using a magnet because we do want to stamp this twice. I want to show you and ask me how I know. So with clear stamps or any stamp that's a sentiment, but especially on clear, make sure you don't press too hard. Can you see how my top, just a note, looks a little bit thicker? In lines it's because I press too hard on my misty door so that's on me just make sure you don't press it super hard so I always just give it a light touch on the top don't even grab my just press tool because I don't want to press too hard and then I'm just gonna move this up an inch 
which is about the size of my sentiment. So I'm watching this grid line on my Misty. Moved it up an inch, ink it again, and I do double stamp because I do, that way I feel like I don't have to feel like I've got to press real hard. If I just re-ink and stamp twice, I feel like I don't have to worry so much that I'm trying to get all the ink down. I just, if I do it twice, I can be a little lighter with my hand, I feel like. We're gonna get all four. Let's add one more. And then we'll scooch it one last time to the one up there. And do it one last time, and then we will emboss. So I don't, don't have to watch me do this anymore, right? Repeat, 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 but that in an hour, close to it, we'll have close to four cards done. So let me move this out of the way. Don't need this anymore. I grab my heat gun. I'm gonna set it over here and kind of start warming it. So it's ready to go for us. Shake our gold embossing powder on it. Everything, I use the embossing tool, but in the winter, everything's so dry and staticky. Like today, even the foil glitter drops were sticking to my hand. So I did tap a little bit on the back of my cardstock to get any extra powder off. So again, when I emboss, you've heard me say this a bazillion times, right? I do like to heat the back. And then I start on the front and I need my glasses. And I, I, I'll just repeat, this is the same thing I always say when I emboss, is I start from one area and I move. I definitely need these today. I'm burning my fingers. I start and I work in one area so that I can see everything's done before I move on to the next. And that works as long as you keep your gun, your heat tool an inch and a half to two inches away. And then there we have all four sentiments ready to die cut and ready to go. And whichever one you're using, whether you wanted to use the frond sentiment set, which is what I got the happy birth, happy Valentine's Day out of or the essential, the essential sentiments, which is what I got the thinking of you and just a note out of. Whichever one you're using, same idea. I just keep shifting it and moving it, put the, all the embossing powder on all three or four and heat it so then I've got them all done and ready to go. So that's how I got all my sentiments done and that's how I put them together quickly and then I would die cut all of them at the same time just so that I don't have to come back and grab my machine and find my die I would go ahead and get them done at the same time so let me grab this just a note we'll run that through I just love embossing I swear one of these times I have to challenge myself to do a card that I don't emboss on don't think I can do it. Sorry, I need a piece of temporary tape to run this through. Don't want it to move. I, I don't like living on the edge. I still think it's hilarious. Someone said one day, I just visit it. So I like that line. I don't live on the edge. I just visit it. And then I go back. I'll use my tape. <laughs> Let's grab my big shot. Let me see if I'm missing anything. Still the gold black. Yep. We're all on the same boat, right? I can't decide. I think they're both just fine. So whichever one you choose. Oh, thank you. I, I don't, um, I really appreciate all your comments because sometimes I think, are you bored with me? <laughs> so I appreciate that you enjoy the way I explain things. I appreciate that. So this will go on the front of here and you can either add foam tape or not, whatever your choice is, completely up to you. I need my, my scissors quick. I've misplaced things in my mess. 
I did enjoy having some time on vacation to be able to stamp and do basically, you know, whatever I wanted. So I did a lot of playing, especially with inks and uh, exploring that. And I didn't know if I would enjoy using a mini ink cube to ink blend, but it really didn't bother me. I found myself picking up the mini ink cube and then using my brush directly on it. I didn't, I was just a little bit worried that that would be not as nice. Granted, I love my full size when I'm at home, but it worked on vacation. I thought it worked kind of nice. And I felt like I got to have some fun just exploring my inks again and how colors go together and uh, spent more time with that. So it was nice. Good vacation. So it was a relaxing vacation until we came home and then we had all kinds of trouble with the flights, which I know lots of people are dealing with. So so a little foam tape behind that guava circle, and then you can pick whatever you want. Uh, like I said, this is where I end up with four cards instead of six because I feel like this smaller pot matches up better with this just to kind of fill it in a little bit more. This little pot I feel like is a little small on its own. So just to kind of fill that in a little bit. And then to do some, if I do the one where I'm gonna put two of them together, I like to take a little bit of post-it tape and pick that up just so I can put foam or glue or whatever I'm gonna do behind them. I might put glue behind this one and a little piece of foam behind the other one because it's going to be in front. And that way this tape will help me because it's keeping everything together. So a little piece of foam tape there and there. One more little piece over here. All right, fill those up and then we'll put that on top. Add our sentiment and this is where I would continue putting the pots on each one. I did this wrong, I'm gonna fix it. I have this pot in front of the other one. So I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna move it. So we've got that and I don't want this to glue down because I accidentally put the glue on the wrong one. So we'll put that pot down behind it. I tuck it in with my glue. Oh, I must not peel the backing off of this one. I got nervous because I realized I put the glue on the wrong one. Doesn't matter one way or the other. I just had to position it behind. It doesn't hurt anything, but. There we go. So I got my pot on and then you can add your sentiment however you would like. Glue, pop it up, glue it down flat, whichever. I'm gonna put some liquid glue on it. Add that and then of course, I'm gonna bring in my ruler because this is where I use my little handy ruler for this stuff. Grab that, make sure it's straight. I, I take my ruler and pick a spot to line it up and that looks kind of straight. It needs to be this way a little bit more. But I used one of my lines against the edge of my card base so I can tell that it's straight, get it where I want it, and hold it down so that it's glued. I have some scraps, there we go. So again, I would continue to do each of these pieces first, like put your circles together, put your plants on top of it, and then keep going with each piece. And the piece that part that takes me the longest is gluing all my drip drops down. So I, because I am big at, I choose to place them and then pick up, pick each one up and lay them down with glue underneath of it. Because I like to move them around and decide, oh, do I want this here? Do I want it there? Do I want to add a piece up by the pot? Would I rather have smaller red? Whatever, it just takes me a while. So I might leave that to do all of that tedious work so you don't have to watch me. And being I've already kept you long today. Um, but that is, granted this is a mix of my four cards, but this is your four cards. And then you only had to blend your plants and your pots once and I hope you try it and I can't wait to see share on the fan page and again join us next Tuesday Taylor will be live for the sale that's going on next week and thanks for joining me sorry I kept you late but have a great day bye